Thank you for joining me at Midnight Mule FPL. This is the weekly video where we're looking at the 5% game. The idea is the people following this and following the instruction should finish in the top 5% globally and therefore high up in their mini league. They may even win it, who knows. So if you're doing this, please make sure you like it or if you just find it interesting, please also <laughs> try and like the video because my likes and subscribes are much lower than lots of other people who are equally as good as me perhaps, maybe even better. All right. Let's go on and look at how we did in game week 8 with this system and then the recommendations for game week 9. Starting with the bankers, everyone who's doing this system will have these four players. Ward, James, Martinelli and Haaland. In game week 8 we put Ward on the bench, Chelsea didn't play but Martinelli got 3 and Haaland got 6. Haaland had the mule hat, he was our captain so he actually got 12 points. So our bankers got 15 points in game week 8. Keeper, you would have had one of these two keepers, either Ramsdale or Pope. Ramsdale got six points and Pope got two. So your keeper got an average of four. You will have two of these defenders in your team. Trent, Cancelo, Perisic, Trippier. Liverpool didn't play. Cancelo got nine, Perisic got two and Trippier got five. So the average given you would have had two of these three potentially, it was 10.7. You would have got a maximum of 14 if you had Cancelo and Trippier. Worse was two if you had Perisic and Trent. But if you didn't have Trent, somebody comes in off the bench, that could have been Luca Dean, he got seven. So I'm kind of keeping these scores as if you didn't have the player who didn't play and someone came in off the bench. And it's only an approximation for this week because there are so many teams not playing. The midfielders... You would have had three of these, Diaz, Bowen, Foden, Madison, Saka and Zaha. Now Liverpool didn't play, so if you had him, you would have a bench person coming on. Bowen got two, Foden eight, Madison seven, Saka nine and Crystal Palace didn't play. So on average, you'd have got 19 and a half points from your midfield. You could have got lucky and got 24 if you'd happened to choose Foden, Madison and Saka, which is possible. Um, and the worst was 17 if you'd had of these Bowen, Foden and Madison. Now you'd have had two of these forwards. Two of Jesus, Tony, Isaac, Mitrovic and Solanke. Jesus got six, Tony got two, Isaac got nine, Mitrovic two, Solanke two. So you'd have got at least four points from these two forwards, potentially 16. The average is 8.4. You'd have had two of these defenders chosen in your team and then one or more of these would have come on for you. Luca Dean, Fafana, Justin, Williams, Patterson. Luca Dean got seven, Fafana two, Justin two, Williams one, Patterson six. So an average of 7.2 from these, maximum of 13 potentially. But like I said, because there are so many permutations this week with so many teams not playing, I'm just kind of going with the players we know play to work out the scores. One midfielder, you would have chosen one of Andreas or Bailey. These would have both started on your bench. They got 1.3, that's an average of two. So this week, if you'd had all the worst possible players from our picks, you'd have got 38 points. The average was 52.3, and the best you could have done from this system was 73. The global average was 50, there are three managers I know that are following this system and they all got in the 60s this week. So they got above average. They had pretty good weeks, I'd say. And remember, the point of this is you just watch this 5% video every week, follow the instructions and you'll do all right. You don't need to spend lots of time watching lots of videos, doing lots of research for yourself. The transfers for game week one. Now we've got a few players that we chose last week that are injured. Isaac's quite an important one that's injured. So you need to Get rid of him and bring in one of these three. Any of these three you like, as long as you've not already got them, of course. Potentially Mitrovic's going to do the best over the next three weeks, but they're all okay. An advantage of Solanke is you will have more money if we need it before week 16 for something else. But Tony's also very good. I think they're all on penalties. It could be pretty close which one gets the most points. Any of these, or all of these, will probably get between, say, 15 and 20 points in the next few weeks. So on the bench, all we need to do is set the bench and the other 11 set themselves. So you want to put Ward on bench. 
I'm now going to show you seven players. The first player you have that I show you goes into your number three slot on the bench. The next one you have, number two, and the last one goes into number one slot. So Patterson would go last on your bench. He's currently injured, but it's not worth getting rid of him. He's 4.1 million and we're probably never going to use him anyway. Then Luca Dean, he's injured, but reports are suggesting he may be available for the weekend game. They're away to Leeds. Leeds are actually quite good at home. So I'm fine with him being this low down on the bench. Then Nico Williams, away to Leicester, very feisty East Midlands derby, hoping for a very good game there. Then Andreas, Fofana, Bailey and Justin. So Justin's obviously at home to Nottingham Forest. So that should be your bench. The order you see there, whichever three you have, you want to be going in that order. Regarding the captain, I'm saying go for Haaland. He can just score against anyone. So Harlan gets the old mule hat. He's the captain. Now regarding vice captain, that's a bit more tricky. Potentially Foden is going to be the best vice captain pick this week. But I always try to avoid having the captain and the vice captain from the same team. Just in case the game gets cancelled. Because then you lose both of them. So a general tip is always choose them from different teams. So with that in mind... I think it's worth having Trent as the vice captain if you've got him. So he would get the vice captain's hat. Okay, so Trent's at home to Brighton. Reasonable chance of a clean sheet. May get an assist. If you don't have Trent, but you have Madison, then make him your vice captain. Home to Nottingham Forest, very nice. If you don't have either of those two, but you do have Tony, he gets to be your vice captain. If you have none of those, but you have Luis Diaz, make him your vice captain. And if you have none of those, well, you have got James... Make him your vice captain. So there it is. That is the review of game week eight, how it went, and the preview for game week nine, and what I think you should do. Follow these rules. We're heading for the top 5%. The three teams I'm aware of that are doing this aren't quite in the 5% yet, but that's absolutely fine. We don't need to push on until like January or February, so don't fret. We should be okay. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you another time. Bye.